Hello, seventh graders, and today your evil project is gonna start focusing on the body systems. So, sorry. Today, you guys are having a very spooky themed assignment. Today, you will be doing the 2.1 metabolism. As you guys can see, we are moving on to chapter two. You guys should have taken the chapter one quiz the other day. And in chapter two, we're gonna start taking a look at the different systems of the body, mainly the circulatory system, which is your blood your respiratory system, and your digestive system, and kind of learning a little bit about the roles of those three systems. Okay, with that, your learning targets. I can demonstrate how food proteins, uh, excuse me, how food proteins and carbohydrates are broken down and moved around the body, and I can demonstrate how oxygen is moved around the body. So the main thing that we're gonna be looking at is how those three molecules, uh, protein, carbohydrates, uh, and then oxygen are brought into the body, what happens when they get in the body, where they go, and then finally where they end up. And you guys should already have a pretty good idea based on what we learned in chapter two, kind of this process, but we're really gonna break it down and look at the role of each of those um, body systems. Again, the circulatory, the respiratory, and the digestive system and how they play into this, okay? All right, so very first activity you need to do today is open up your OneNote and add key concepts two, three, four, and five to the key concepts page of the metabolism section of your OneNote. So key concept number two, cells can only use molecules that are small enough to enter the cell. So one of the questions we talked about so far is why don't we find starch in our cells, okay? If you guys remember what starch looks like, it is that long, huge chain of glucose molecules. So why would we not find them in the cells of our body? Well, because they're too big. Okay, so today you're really gonna focus on looking at how digestion breaks things like starch or proteins down into either glucose or amino acids and how those molecules are small enough to fit into our circulatory system to be delivered to our cells, whereas big molecules like proteins and starch are not big enough to move through our circulatory system and into our cells. So that's gonna be part of your guys' focus today when we run this model. Okay, number three, the respiratory system brings in oxygen molecules from the air. These oxygen molecules are already small enough to fit into cells. So that's why we don't have to digest anything that we breathe, okay? It's generally everything that enters our circulatory system from our lungs is small enough, okay? Uh, the digestive system brings in food, breaks it down into smaller molecules, such as glucose and amino acids, and those can fit into cells. So they're gonna get into our circulatory system once they're digested. And finally, the circulatory system transports glucose, oxygen, and amino acid molecules to every cell in the body. Of course, as we dig a little bit more into the body systems, you guys will find that it transports a lot more than that, like carbon dioxide, um, fats, those kinds of things, hormones, okay? There's a lot that happens in our circulatory system. But those are the main things we're gonna focus on as we kind of start to hone into metabolism and cellular respiration. Now we get our energy in chapter three. All right, let's go ahead and take a work, look at our warm up. So you will have a little sim activity for your warm up today. You guys will use this link right here, right click it, open it up, and that will bring you into the sim. If you guys are on an iPad, obviously you're gonna click check yes but most of you guys should be on a chromebook so you guys will check no okay and then what do you notice about the path oxygen molecules take in a healthy body use good detail so what you guys are going to do is select healthy body select observe so i'm going to go ahead and hope this loads sometime in the next 20 minutes okay so here's healthy body uh reload yes and then choose observe Okay, in that, you guys are gonna focus on just oxygen by pressing on the other molecules at the bottom of the screen to hide them. So if you guys notice right down here, let me zoom this in just a bit for you guys. Okay, you guys can get rid of other molecules. So we're gonna get rid of carbon dioxide. Is it gonna work for me? Okay, we're gonna hide water. We're gonna hide glucose, starch, fiber, amino acids, and protein. So the only thing we should be looking at is these green little circular oxygen molecules. So focus on just oxygen by pressing on the other molecules at the bottom of the screen to hide them. Observe and describe how oxygen moves through different parts of the body. So pick one little oxygen molecule as it comes in. Okay, I'm gonna choose this guy right here. Okay, oh, there it goes, it moved in. Okay, and now you can see, oh, here's one pathway for it. Okay, and then watch where it kind of goes from here. 
Okay, so you guys will kind of look at those oxygen molecules and figure out a little bit about their pathways. Oh, what's that little guy? That's a mitochondria. Okay, so go ahead, describe that pathway of oxygen. Okay, remember you guys can pause this video at any point that you need to complete each activity and then when you are ready, move on. So those of you guys at, at home, unfortunately, won't be able to do this little hands-on activity we do. Basically what I'm doing is I'm giving everybody in a group of four a little role. And some of you guys will be playing or some of the kids in class will be playing the role of the digestive system. Some will be playing the role of the respiratory system. Some will be playing the role of the circulatory system. And you guys will learn about the fourth role here in a second. So I just kind of want to break down uh, we have pipe cleaners that are twisted together. So one color pipe cleaner represents starch. Notice how it's twisted together. And this purple pipe cleaner represents uh, protein. So notice how it's twisted together. So what we'll see is we eat proteins and we eat starches. They enter the body and then into the digestive system through our mouth. Okay, once we're in our digestive system, notice that these pipe cleaners kind of get unwound. So we break starch down into glucose. Okay, in this case, we have three pipe cleaners. So we're going to go ahead and assume three glucose molecules. And protein, we would break those down into amino acids. Again, this should be all old information because we went over this a lot in, first, uh, in the first chapter. Okay, once we have those um, broken down, what you guys will see is there's this spot that we need the molecules that we just digested to enter our bloodstream. So what we'll see at each of these stations is a little index card with a tiny hole punch. If we were to try to fit this whole molecule in through this tiny hole punch, it wouldn't fit. Okay, but if we're just looking at the individual molecules of glucose when we digested the starch, each one of those would be able to be fed through that little hole and then that's going to represent those molecules entering the bloodstream. So that kind of breaks down uh, digestion. Okay, on the next slide, this is again what we're doing in class. You guys kind of missed out on this, but you guys will still be able to kind of see what happened with this. And so we have uh, our oxygen. We didn't have to do any digestion with our oxygen. This is what an oxygen molecule looks like. It's just one green pipe cleaner. So that's already small enough to go right through that index card hole and into our bloodstream. And finally, once our three types of pipe cleaners enter our bloodstream, our glucose, amino acids, and our oxygen, we can then use the bloodstream to deliver them to the cells. So notice again this little hole. Those three molecules are already small enough to go right into the cells because they were small enough to fit into the bloodstream to begin with. So it's going to go through this little hole in the cell membrane, and then it's going to enter the cell. And that's where you guys are able to kind of see that in the SAM, um, the oxygen, or excuse me, the oxygen, the glucose, and the amino acids all entering our cells here. Okay, is we'll have all three of those molecules that are small enough to go from the bloodstream into the cells. And what kind of happens from there is variable, and we'll get into that later in this chapter and later in chapter three. Okay, with that being said, let's talk about some of these different things that you guys won't see, but we're going to still talk about in this model. So the pipe cleaners are going to represent the molecules. So different colors represent different types of molecules. Large molecules are represented by several pipe cleaners twisted together. So again, you guys kind of saw that in the picture of the digestive system, the starch and the proteins were both larger molecules that were all twisted together and obviously needed to be digested in order for them to fit through the villi um, into the bloodstream. Okay, index cards with the holes represent the tiny openings through which molecules pass. There are three types of openings in the model, villi, alveoli, and the cellular membrane. So we see the little villi in our small and large intestine. We see the alveoli in the lungs, and we see little holes in the cell membrane that allow us to deliver those molecules from the bloodstream into the cell membrane. The role of the digestive system. So any student who has this card, and again, each student in a group of four will either be the digestive, the respiratory, or the circulatory, or the cells. Okay, so the digestive system will take and they will eat food. So they will eat starch and they will eat amino acids and they will break them down one molecule at a time. 
and into their three smaller molecules, which again are glucose and amino acids. They'll untwist the pipe cleaners and that kind of represents digestion and then deliver these molecules to the circulatory system by pushing them through and feeding them through those little tiny holes in the villi index cards. Okay, that will be the small intestine. So this all happens in the small intestine. That's where we absorb most of our nutrients. In class, we talked about the small intestine being seven meters long. And remember we talked about that little first 25 centimeters being where most of our digestion occurs. The rest of those seven meters is where we absorb all this stuff. So when we're talking about these little villi cards in the small intestine station, that's the other seven meters that we've been talking about. Okay, the role of the respiratory system is to bring in the oxygen one molecule at a time. My oxygen's already as small as it needs to be, so it can go directly from breathing it in to delivering it to those little cards in the lungs. Uh, that we call the alveoli cards, or alveoli cards, excuse me. And then circulatory system. So another member of the group are going to be the students playing this role. They will pick up molecules in the lungs and in the small intestine and carry them to one of the three cell stations. They can carry no more than one pipe cleaner at a time, so they have to make a lot of trips back and forth to both the digestive system and, or excuse me, the small intestine and the lungs. Uh, and then once they pick up those individual glucose, oxygen, or amino acid pipe cleaners, they're going to deliver them to the cells and pass them through those little holes in the cell membrane. Okay? Uh, you... What? Oh, sorry. Okay, moving on. The cells. So students playing any of the cell roles will try to collect the molecules they need. They will need to stay at their station and communicate with the circulatory to system to request specific molecules to meet their needs based on the instructions on their cell cards. So the fourth row in that group are the cells, and they have little cards in front of them that have instructions to make certain things. So they'll holler out to the circulatory system, hey, I need three proteins and one glucose, because I need to make this. So then the circulatory system person will have to go back three times to the small intestine, or excuse me, to the, whatever, I just said it as an example, three glucose and one, one amino acid to grab whatever they need. Okay, and while they're waiting, they're going to be kind of restocking my stuff for me. So twisting the yellow and purple pipe cleaners back in together uh, into groups of three. So that's kind of explaining what we did in class. So I just want you guys to think about that. So here's kind of a little lineup of what the kids are doing. You guys can look over that. It's really not so important for you guys to know because you won't be actually running this model as you are home. Okay, go ahead, take a second though, and you guys will pause this and watch this video. So this kind of gives you guys a rundown of how these systems work together. So you'll right click, open that link. Your guys' video looks like this. So take a couple minutes, watch that short video, and then when you guys are done, let's jump back in and let's talk about what we saw in this model. Okay, so in this, the kids ran the model and they got to see kind of what happened, okay? With that being said, at some point in the model, about 10 minutes in of the kids running and doing their jobs, I gave them a card that said, your heart just failed, okay? I didn't actually mean to line this up um, with the heart failure, but look at that, that heart just failed as well. So with that being said, the kids experienced heart failure. And basically what that means is that our circulatory system is no longer running. Okay, we don't have blood being pumped because our heart quit working. So that means the circulatory person goes and sits down. Okay, the cells are demanding things. The digestion is still working. We're still breathing, but there's nothing to deliver those things to the cells. So I want you guys to kind of think about what that would do. Okay, here's some questions I want you to think about based on the information I've given you. What did you do in your role in the classroom body system? So obviously you didn't have a specific role, but think about some of those other things that the people did. Okay, what did you learn about this body system or the cells in the body from participating in the model? Again, what did you guys kind of learn about each of the body systems and each of their roles? And then finally, you know, in class, we would have discussed the answers with the group um, and everyone in the group would share. So I just, I just want you guys to kind of be on that same mindset. I know you guys aren't here to do this and that's kind of a bummer, but you guys can go ahead and polish up your thoughts using the homework for today. So you guys are gonna be looking at each of those systems in the homework. So you guys will again need your metabolism simulation for that. So launch the metabolism metabolism simulation, select healthy body and select observe. So again, we're gonna go back to, oops, didn't wanna do that. Go back to our simulation, healthy body, 
relaunch, observe. Okay, and for the first question here, you're gonna feed the body some SAMEs, okay? That gives you guys a mixture of both proteins and starches. Okay, so feed the body a couple sandwiches and focus on how it happens to starch in the digestive system. So turn off all the molecules except for starch and glucose. So I would go ahead, feed it some SAMEs, and I'm gonna go ahead and turn off every molecule except for starch and glucose, and I'm just gonna kind of observe what happens, okay? What do you observe? You guys would answer that there. Okay, then move on. Now repeat your observation, but this time turn off all the molecules except for proteins and amino acids. So again, I'm going to go ahead, restart this, feed it some SAMEs. Okay, and then I'm going to turn off everything but amino acids and proteins. So that's going to be the only thing left on there. I'm going to go ahead and observe what happens there. And then finally, turn off all the molecules except for oxygen. What did you observe? Again, Go ahead, reset this, healthy body, observe, and then feed it some SAMEs. The SAMEs obviously won't be a source of oxygen, but go ahead and turn off everything except for your little green circle of oxygen. Okay, observe what happens, okay? You guys will answer those three questions, and then you guys will move on to this section here. Which molecules from food and air end up in the cells of the body? So I want you guys to just reset everything, go back to your healthy body, and observe, and I want you guys to zoom in, feed it some SAMEs, and observe just what happens in the cells of the bodies. So keep an eye on that. You guys can speed it up a little bit if you want to, but keep an eye on what you, okay, that might be too fast. Maybe slow it down. <laughs> okay, uh, keep an eye on all the different molecules you see. So for instance, oh, there's some amino acids there. Oh, there's some glucose there. Okay, so keep paying attention to the different molecules. I want you guys to watch that for a couple minutes because you're going to see a lot of things change as we go in. So as you see, see new shapes, check the key and kind of look at what we end up having in the cells. Okay, watch what comes in, watch what goes into the mitochondria, and watch, watch what comes out of the mitochondria or out of other places in the cells. So again, I want you guys to go through and check all that apply using your draw tool. Okay, you guys can use a highlighter, it's probably the easiest. Okay, and then finally on your last question, you're gonna click and drag to match, okay? These are all questions about the three systems that were studied in this unit, so circulatory system, digestive system, and respiratory system. Which one breaks down large molecules into smaller? Click and drag. Which one takes in oxygen molecules from the environment? Click and drag. And then which one delivers molecules to cells in the body? So you guys will match these three words right here for the three systems to each of these descriptions right here. Okay, finally, do your wrap-up. If you have any questions, circle yes or no. If you have questions, type them here. If not, just move on to the next part. Four, three, two, one. how do you think you did? Bloody great work. Now hand it in. Okay, I hope you guys are having a great day. Bye.